I will uh, talk uh, perhaps uh, in a sort of continuity with uh, Laurent's uh, uh, lecture this morning, uh, because as I said, he was my supervisor, and I'm very influenced by his social theory, and particularly uh, the work he done uh, on the, the study of the development of uh, statistics in France, which was an important work with Alain Desrosières. And it has been circulated beyond France because in the sociology of uh, European uh, education. And he, he started his lecture with this uh, formula, uh, what works, which is largely linked to uh, the idea of the development of uh, evidence-based uh, education uh, or evidence-based research on policy in education. And I think that Martin spoke about that yesterday. I was not there, but and he spoke about the privatization of education. So I think in uh, studying Europe, on studying Europe education, can be interesting to come uh, back to this uh, issue of uh, what uh, state, what the educative state is, is becoming in front of the market or the big neoliberal market. And uh, I would try to uh, situate this evolution in the state, uh, not in a stronger position between the state and the market, but in a more uh, complex way, explic explanation of uh, the, 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 the development of a, a new uh, state. And I will take uh, some uh, example from the French context and from the Nordic context uh, at the same time. And I will see uh, I can be an interesting uh, uh, means of uh, investigating in a comparative way the states on these calculable words. Calculable words we can be referred to different conceptions of justice, you know, uh, calculable, calculable words it can mean the state is searching effectiveness. But uh, with, for example, the development of uh, benchmarking right, at European level, we can use benchmark uh, as a sort of, uh, uh, um, uh, sort of um, mean of uh, of uh, uh, valuing different orders, uh, different words, or different orders of justice in terms of not only effectiveness, but for example, fame or reputation of the states, or of, co of course, organizing a competition between the states. So behind instruments and behind uh, mode of calculation, you can have some uh, different modes of valuation, which are quite important in terms of their uh, Political, uh, political effects. So uh, generally, the, the evolution of the state is analyzed in the research literature as a sort of post-bureaucratic regime. Uh, the state's moving from a, a, a bureaucratic structure to a post-bureaucratic one. Uh, at the same time, most uh, researchers consider that it's an invention of a new uh, bureaucracy. I think that uh, uh, the issue of new public management, for example, is quite important to consider and to see that the new public management, which is largely be developed by the state and by education, is something quite different from the bureaucratic regime. It doesn't correspond to the same conception of justice in a way, but it doesn't correspond to the, new fun the same functioning of the state because the state is capable to invent at the same time new tools, uh, new tools of governance, new tools of regulation, which are quite different uh, from the previous bureaucratic states. And when we're speaking about these tools, we're speaking about governing technologies in a kind of uh, post foucauldian uh, analysis. And it's quite interesting to analyze its impact on school organization and profession, particularly when you've got a global standardization or the global emergence of standards according to a kind of quality conventions. And these quality standards are, are impacting, in a way, uh, the work of professionals within uh, school organizations are uh, newly uh, conceptualized. So I, 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 it will be the end of my uh, lecture, but I will explain how this change of the state on these governing technologies can impact on prof profession themselves on how their work is uh, not only uh, conceptualized, but is uh, uh, framed by uh, these uh, tools and by new uh, 
uh, in a way, uh, quality, uh, uh, quality standards. Uh, very often, when you look at the research literature, this evolution in terms of quality insurance mechanism on the standardization is analyzed through the eye of the market, the neoliberal global market, which is penetrating, penetrating the uh, spheres of intervention of, of the states and some, most of uh, English-speaking scholars speaking about the marketization of the state or the allowing of the states. What, but when you consider Europe and European uh, countries uh, for which there is a strong legacy of the states, the state is not so disappearing that is trans it is transformed in a way and it's quite resisting to uh, market on neoliberal, as it is categorized, influence. That's I'm going to try to, to demonstrate, particularly from the French context, but you can find some similarities in the northern countries in which the state has a, has a strong legacy, but, uh, on particularly in education, because he has, of course, uh, created and developed public education as a, as a public service. <laughs> Uh, with, uh, on behalf, equality of opportunities. So the creation of the school education, so school system, the education system in France, is very directed to this idea of a building at the same time a community of citizens through education on behalf of uh, equality of opportunity, uh, 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 a common good, which refers to what Laurent would name uh, a civic good in a way, which has been very important in the building of the French education state. At the same time, even the bureaucratic state wanted to be more effective in a way, in uh, capable to uh, reduce uh, uh, the inequality of opportunities between, between students. So this idea of the mix between uh, uh, civic uh, civic order, civic worth, and effectively, effectiveness worth has been al always at, uh, has been at the foundation of the Republican uh, uh, state uh, system in education. And it has resisted largely to the influence of markets and uh, uh, quality standardization worldwide. And this resistance, this, uh, uh, this misunderstanding too, is largely shared by uh, French policymakers, uh, by uh, professionals in education, who consider, ah, oh, the market is the US, or it's managerial, and, uh, and they, they quite not, uh, they, they quite not uh, prepared uh, to welcome even uh, a, a, a quality uh, a standardization. But my point is more uh, at the beginning of the lecture to uh, insist of on the fact that education is an affair of the state, but at least uh, from the 1920s, and we come back to the 1920s, it's a, 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 an affair of a governing population, on an affair of uh, demography, and I've already uh, written some things on, on that in my previous uh, paper, and I think if we think about education, we have to think about the, the, the role of the state in governing population in education, at the time in European countries, and this issue of governing populations become a very important uh, stake uh, at, at European level through the development of uh, the Lisbon and the European uh, strategy. So we can make some link between uh, how the states has considered this issue of governing population in education and how today the European Commission is considering this issue in developing, of course, uh, benchmarking and uh, uh, comparison between the states uh, uh, through the open method of coordination. You probably heard about this uh, building of educators on, on benchmarks, which have the, uh, the, um, the aim uh, to lead uh, national policies according to uh, shared objective uh, of uh, the European uh, Commission, and particularly the department, the, General Directorate of Education and uh, uh, Training. So uh, what is interesting in this continuity between the 20th century and the 21st century, at the level of the state and at European level, is this uh, uh, concern of the state uh, to be able, the state, and if, of course, is civil servants and experts and so on, to be able to develop uh, metrics, to develop a calculable word in order to better invest in uh, human 
capital. And we'll see that uh, this notion of human capital, which is largely promoted by human capital theorists, uh, economics of education, is an old version. It's not new, but this concept, this concept have, has evolved as the education policy was evolving on the education systems uh, according to the uh, evolution of these uh, education uh, uh, policies. So the issue of investment in human capital and the issue of demography are quite linked in, uh, if we conceptualize the, the changing condition of education policies at European level. And I will explain today how some new European metrics emerge in order to better uh, govern population at European level on behalf of lifelong learning, the lifelong learning uh, strategy, but how we can find this metric or some of this metric uh, elaborated or designed in the 20th century and largely by uh, economists who are largely, at, at least at the beginning, were based in the US because Jim Exman, the leader of the human capital theory, is a Nobel Prize of economics, but he has developed his first studies on the US uh, context, and that it has circulated worldwide, uh, largely resumed by international organizations like the OECD and the European uh, Commission. And today, you've got a think tank of European economists, all specialized in uh, human capital terrorists. There is some French one, and some English ones too, and Nordic ones. And uh, they uh, present themselves as the think tank for the European Commission, advising the European Commission in the Lisbon strategy. Uh, you can uh, tap on Google, any, you will see that these economics are very important. They are networking to together and they participate largely to the writing of uh, official documents on the elaboration of uh, recommendations for the DG uh, education on, uh, on the on culture.